Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the bending moments caused by your load on a beam. Here we have a picture of a beam supported by the two reaction forces. We have the load force here acting on a single point, and we're going to take a look at what's happening internally to the beam right here at this location. We're going to separate the two sections, and it seems obvious that we have the two shear forces, one going down in this direction, one going up in that direction. Let's see if that makes sense. Well, notice that if we're pushing down on the beam in this direction and then we're pushing on the beam in this direction with the reaction force that the beam would act with the force on the beam would cause the beam to go like this and of course if the beam wasn't strong enough it would simply shear off right there so those are called shear forces and we can see that the, uh, the second section section two will cause a downward force in section one and therefore we draw the shear force in this direction this would then be the positive shear force on section one likewise you can see that there's a force pushing section one up a force pushing section two down and so you can see that section one has a force acting on section two in this direction that would be the shear force in this direction so we consider the shear force v2 positive in that direction that all seems to make sense however when we talk about the moments that's a different story how can we say that this is a positive moment on section one and that this is a positive moment on section two in those directions? Remember that typically a counterclockwise moment is considered positive and a clockwise moment is considered negative, but the convention is here differently that this is considered positive for moment one and this is also considered positive for moment two. Why is that? Well, let's take a look at this picture over here. Notice that the load, the force there, causes the beam to sag. Now, of course, greatly exaggerating the sag, it's usually not even noticeable, but to some extent the beam will sag a little bit, which means that the beam will ex experience compression forces near the top and experience tension forces near the bottom. In other words, the center of the beam will remain roughly the same, but the top of the beam gets pushed together and the bottom beam gets stretched out. Now those forces cause internal moments in the beam, and this is why. Notice, as the forces of tension pull the beam apart in this direction because of the load force pushing down on the beam, we have a force pulling in this direction at the bottom of section one, and in this direction at the bottom of section two. Let me draw the arrow a little bit better. <clears throat> Again, in this direction for section one, and in this direction for section two. On the top part of the beam, there's a force pushing against the beam in this direction and against the beam in this direction. Notice that from here to here, those forces will change. So the forces will be not quite as strong in this direction, not quite as strong here, not quite as strong. And eventually the force will be zero at the center because there's no deformation of the beam at the center. And then we start having forces in this direction. And it might be better to go ahead and draw them like this. So you can see how the gradient of the force reacts to the bending of the beam. So we're going to get rid of this for now and draw it over here. And we can do the same on this side. Notice that there'll be forces of tension in this direction, but not as strong as we get towards the center of the beam, like this. And then on the top half of the beam, you can see that the force of compression causes the beam to experience forces in this direction. And we'll go ahead and draw that instead of this. So you can see the grade on the force is in that direction. Now notice, these forces here counteract the bending of the beam. They push back. If it's a strong beam, the bending will be very small because these, these forces will cause the beam not to bend. And notice, we think about the moment here. If this is the point of rotation, about which we're going to calculate the moment, notice that here we have the forces this way, and here we have the forces this way, which causes the moment about that central point of the beam in this direction. And that's why we have the convention that the moment for section one will be in this direction, and we call that a positive moment. That is the moment that fights the bending of the beam. And the stronger you make the beam, the greater forces it can withstand in those directions. Likewise over here, notice if we pick the pivot point over here, now you can see we can calculate the moment across this point by realizing the forces are pushing in this direction here, in that direction there, and you can clearly see that the moment is in this direction for section two, and that would be called moment two. And those are the internal forces of the beam trying to oppose the bending of the beam. The stronger you make it, 
the greater these moments are, and therefore the less the bending of the beam will occur. That's what we mean by the moment of the internal forces, or I should say the internal forces causing the moment about the beam. Anywhere along the beam you'll experience these same kind of forces and the same kind of moments. And that's why by convention those are considered positive moments. And that is why.